that's Tammy with Real Southern Woman t today. It's August the 19th. I'm actually chewing on a piece of candy. I'm sorry, but I couldn't resist. It's a, it's a um, jo uh, Jolly Rancher apple. And it's delish. I've been buying candy because when I get a craving for something sweet, then I can just eat a piece of candy because y'all always have to have something sweet. And it keeps me from eating, like, something big. You know, that's a whole lot of calories. Sure is good, too. My favorite candies, my very favorite candies are now in layers. And I know they're not good for my feelings and my teeth. And I also like, um, as far as just candy, I like better honeys. Um... What else do I like? I like those rainbow sour strip things. Oh, I love bottle caps. And um, I used to, when I was younger, like May's age, I would buy bubble gum and rock candy. And I would chew the bubble gum, and when it lost its sweetness, I would put the rock candy in my mouth and chew the bubble gum with the rock candy. And that's how I would eat rock candy. I loved candy cigarettes too. I know that sounds crazy, but I sure did. And the other day I was in Big Lots and they were selling candy cigarettes. They had a, they had a, uh, an area that was just older candies. And oh, I bought them and they were delish. I love them. Today, um, our Bible study is very interesting. Let me flip over here. It's called The Certainty of His Word, and it's very encouraging, I think. And I think you will, too. Um, comes out of Hebrew, chapter 6, verse 18. And it says, It is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to Him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. And this is a really nice um, verse, and it is a very wonderful Bible study. Um, and it's very encouraging because our God is so good and perfect and just. So everything he does in our life, we should trust him, regardless of how it looks on our side, because he knows better than we do. And it says there is absolutely nothing more certain in this world than a promise God has given. Whatever he says, he will be, he will do, it will be accomplished. Regardless of the obstacles, the setbacks, and the seeming impossibilities. It says, take heart in this truth today. Repeatedly in scripture, we are told not one word has failed of all his good promise. And this comes out of 1 Kings chapter 8. Verse 56, if you want to look it up, it says, This is because it is impossible for God to lie, which means his holy character prevents him from deceiving you. That is a whole lot different than the prince of the world, which is the devil, because his character is very deceiving. But God cannot deceive us because he doesn't lie. It says, But also realize that though people may unintentionally fail us, because of their lack of ability, God will never, because he's not subject to our weakness. Our weakness says, it says, his power is always enough to achieve his every goal. Because of his great wisdom, he plans not only a way to get you there, but the best, most beneficial way. Nothing catches him by surprise or is able to foil his ultimate objectives. I like that. I like that sentence. He plans not only a way to get you there, but the best, mo most beneficial way. May not seem like it's beneficial to us at the time and what we're going through, but he knows what's best. The Lord your God is completely trustworthy, so keep obeying him no matter how difficult the road seems. Have faith in the promises he has given you and never, ever give up your hope in him.
Um, I'm going to read out of the scripture because this is a very um, important place in scripture in Hebrew. It's in chapter 6 if you want to look it up with me. And um, But it talks about how Abraham was given a promise by God. And how God fulfilled that promise. And it gets even a little deeper than that. So we're going to go to Hebrew chapter 6. I'm flipping there. I'm sorry I'm eating candy, y'all. Okay, and it's called... Okay, God's infallible purpose in Christ, okay? Now, it's going to talk about Christ, and it's going to talk about, and I should have looked up how to say this, Melchizedek, and how Christ and Melchizedek have something in common, okay? If you're on here, and you're not truly convinced that Christ is the Son of God, and you don't really believe in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you kind of are on the fence about if God is truly, um, if Jesus is truly God, and if Jesus is truly the Son of God, then this is very important place in Scripture that you should read and study, okay? And it's Hebrew chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 13. And really and truly, it goes all the way through the first of chapter 8, okay? I'm probably going to read chapter, I think I'll read portions of chapter 7, but I may even let this Bible study continue through the week because it is such an important subject. And there's a lot of reading here, and I don't want to just read the Word of God for that long of a period of time because most of the time when I pick up the Bible and I start reading Everybody signs off, okay? That is our carnal, fleshly nature. So please, just close your eyes if you have to and take it in. See, I've already had two sign off. But just close your eyes and take it in and listen to what the Word of God says because this is God. Um, the thing that blows my mind the most is when I read out of the Bible, that's when people sign off. And that is the only time God can actually speak to you is through his word. So if you're one of those that likes to hear the Bible study and you like to hear the opinions, but you never really want to hear the word, you need to do a checkup because that is God's way of speaking to you. And you cannot have a relationship with God if you refuse to listen to him. That's not how relationships work. If you had a spouse and all you ever did is talk to them through prayer, but they never could speak to you, that would be how you were treating our God of the universe, the God that saved your soul from hell. So think about that tonight. How often do you really let him speak to you? And how often do you want to listen to what he has to say to you? Um, and think about these things, okay? So we're going to read a little bit. In chapter 6, and it says a better estimate, but we're going to start with God's infallible purpose in Christ. It says, For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Excuse me, I'm sorry. Surely blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability, the immutability, I'm not the best at prescribe, of, of uh, talking, so y'all just got to forgive that part of me, 
It says, Thus God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that the two un immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of a hope that's set before us. The, this hope which we have is an anchor of the soul. An anchor of the soul, y'all. Both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us. Even Jesus, having become high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, Melchizedek is in the, Old, in the Old Testament, and he's a prophet. I believe he... No, he's a priest, not a prophet. Melchizedek was a priest, but he was different than all the other priests. And he was so different that Abraham actually gave him a portion of the tithe. Um, and so we're going to read a little bit in chapter 7 about... Melchizedek. It says he was the king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, who received the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Now, beyond all contradiction to the lesser, is blessed by the better. Here... Mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. Even Levi, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Now this, this part right here talks about a new, a new, a new need for a priesthood, okay? So we're going to read through this, and then I'm going to, we'll end it, and then we'll try, we'll try to pick up tomorrow night, and we'll read the greatness of the new priest. And if you have a chance, go into these scriptures uh, tonight and tomorrow, that's Hebrews chapter, the end of chapter 6, all of chapter 7, and the beginning of chapter 8. Look at it, look in the bottom of your Bible where it talks about it, if you've got a study Bible, and try to kind of get a grasp of what's going on here. And maybe I can kind of explain it even more tomorrow in a better, you know, way to you. But it says, Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people re received the law, what further need was there another priest should arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? Now, Melchizedek was not of the lineage of the Levites, and he was a different priest. So, it's saying, why in the world was there this new priesthood? Okay? It says, for the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken of belongs to another tribe, from which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judea, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. 
And it is yet far more evident if, in the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. For he testifies, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. So this is actually describing to us how Jesus, how Melchizedek was a type of a type in the Old Testament to show us that Jesus was going to do this. And so he was a type of a sign, pretty much, an indication of who Jesus would be. So if you do have a hard time understanding that Jesus is the Son of God, if you do not believe in the writings of the New Testament, or you believe, you know, that um, there's just no way that Jesus could be the Son of God, um, I urge you to read these scriptures and study them. Um, if you're if you're Jewish, or if you're um, let's say you're Muslim, or whatever it is you are, because um, there's a lot of different things. And for some reason you do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I want you to please consider it, because if you pass away and die, there is a heaven and hell. If there is not, this, if the Son of God has not come as it was prophes prophesied in the Old Testament and you believe in Jesus anyway, let's say you do believe it. You decide that you do believe it. If you die, and that is the way to heaven, for that is what he says. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And you miss it. Then there's a hell for you. A real, fire-burning, terrible place that I do not want you to go to. Okay? And so I urge you to consider these scriptures and consider that Jesus is is the Son of God. Because let's just say you don't consider it, you can go to hell, okay? If you do consider it and you choose to believe in Christ, then if it's true, you'll be there in heaven with all those who believe. Um, so I just urge you to read it, okay? So, I will finish up tomorrow, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about it, and I will try to follow it through the first of uh, chapter 8, because it talks about the new priestly service, okay? And uh, we all know that when Jesus was hanging on the cross, and if you don't know this, you can read about it, um, there was a veil that hid the most holy of holies, that only the priests could go behind in order to atone for the people of Israel. And when Jesus died on that cross, he, the actual, when he died, the actual veil, and it was a huge, thick piece of material, was ripped in two. And the reason for that is because we now can go to the Holy of Holies, to straight to God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we don't have to go through a priest, and we don't have to go through another person to pray for us. We can actually close our eyes. We don't even have to close our eyes, but we can speak to the Father, the real God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is now that new priest. He has paid the atonement for our sin. And that is such a blessing, y'all. Um, I hope I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, 
I have a someone at church with us, um, several people at the church, actually, but our actual youth pastor just had surgery this morning, so y'all keep him in your prayers. His name is Pastor Henry, and so keep him and your wife. He had a major back surgery, and I think he'll be um, in Northside for quite a few days. And so just pray for him and his wife and um, pray for May because she started, uh, she was moved to school this weekend. We moved her up there. She sent me, I sent her a message this morning and I said, are you busy today? And she sent me the schedule. And let me tell you, they got them up bright and early and had them to be somewhere, I think by seven o'clock or 7.30ish. And then they didn't get off this evening until after 6 o'clock. So they really keep those kids busy when they put them in school for the first semester. I do not remember being that busy on my freshman uh, fall semester. But I, re I just really don't. But uh, I didn't, you know, back then I don't think they were as organized and stuff as they are now. Y'all, when we took her to school this weekend, I was amazed. We had her stuff in the back of the truck. And it was so hot. And I was thinking, oh, my Lord, we're going to have all this stuff to drag up to her room and blah, blah, blah. And they were so organized. And they had all of these kids directing traffic, telling us where to park. They got all of the luggage out of the truck for us and took it to the room. I mean, it was amazing. All we had to do is drive up, let them get the stuff out of the truck. They took it to the room while we went to park and come back to her room. Me and Chris actually chose to walk to her room, which was all the way across the campus because the shuttle was so busy. So that wore me out. So you better believe we got a shuttle ride back to the truck when we were done. But anyway, it's exciting. She's got a cute little roommate. She seems really, really sweet. We got to meet her parents. So it was a great weekend. Um, I'm excited for her. Will I miss her? Yes, of course I'll miss her. And, and just weird things. Like today I went to wash clothes and I thought she's not even, I don't even have, you know. I, it's not like I'm washing their clothes right now anyway. I quit washing their clothes a few, quite a few months ago because I told them they needed to get back in the swing of taking care of themselves. But it's just weird, you know, because she's not here. Like when I went to cook supper, I don't have, she never hardly ate supper with us anyway because she's so picky. But I didn't even have to think about whether or not she would eat it. You know, it's just kind of weird. And then after next year, we'll be doing the same thing with Amy and me and Chris. will be like honeymooners all over again. <laughs> Too bad our bodies aren't like honeymooners, right? I know I know, but that's the truth. But... We still love each other, so that's all that matters. Um, I hope that um, y'all have a good afternoon and y'all keep everybody in your prayers. Melissa's doing pretty good with her teeth. She's in a lot of pain. She doesn't get to go back to that dentist office until the following Monday. Not today, but next Monday. So hopefully I'll get to go with her. Um, so we got a lot going on at the Nichols, and I hope maybe uh, to uh, get something new done tomorrow for cake lessons so um y'all just keep us in your prayers and um i'll keep you guys in my prayers and um, i love all y'all and i appreciate y'all listening to the bible study y'all just let me know if you ever need any you know for me to pray about anything and y'all also let me know if you um want to study a certain subject or you have, you know, like if you have a prayer request or um, if you're interested in knowing more about salvation and what being saved means, I'll be more than happy to talk to you about it. Um, I hope y'all have a blessed day and um, y'all have a good night. We're going to say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for all of these promises that you have given us as your children we thank you for providing your son as an atonement for our sin. And we thank you for being adopted into to the family of God and for us being able to be your children. May we have a, more and more faith every day. May, may, may we read your word and become more in tune and let you talk to us and uh, strengthen our relationship with you. 
I pray that we would have faith in you and trust in everything that's happening in our lives, no matter if it's good or bad, to know that um, hopefully we can always make sure that you are given the glory and honor and we're always thankful and if you're putting us through a fire for some reason right now, we thank you for that, even if it's hard, because we know that we will be refined like pure gold if we become more and more like you. Um, just help us each and every day follow you more, want to learn about you more, and help us love each other and pray for each other. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope y'all have a good night, and I guess I'll go watch TV with my hubby, bubby. No, and y'all read um, chapter 7 and 8 tomorrow of Hebrews. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Love ya. Bye.